Marcel Kittel, the German sprinter, has terminated his contract with Katusha by mutual agreement. So he said in a statement, in the last two months, I've had the feeling of being exhausted. At this moment, I'm not able to train and race at the highest level. For this reason, I've decided to take a break and take time for myself, think about my goals and make a plan for my future. Brad, what do we make of this? Well, I don't know. We've just it kind of leads you. It's very vague exhaustion last few months, you know, as he got glandular fever, things like that. From what we understand, he's not giving, no, not talking to anyone. He's not even talking to his agent. And, and obviously all it does is lead us to just speculate. And, and you know, naturally a few people are talking about ment- mental health and things like that, but there's nothing's been said about mental health. But it leads people to think when it's very vague and, and it's mid-season, it's a bit odd. Is it pressure? Is he falling out with the team? We just don't know. And obviously it just leads us to speculate. But if you want to be left alone then you could just say, I mean, Mark Cavendish did it last year, didn't he? And said, look, mm. you know, I've had, I think he did a video message, said look, a blood test have shown that I've had something wrong with me now for a while. I'm just going to take a breather, take a breather from social media and spend time with family. And I think that everyone's like, okay, so that's what's wrong, really. I think when it's like this, it just leads people to go, okay, so what's wrong? I remember last year, you know, Connie Shev criticised him heavily publicly during the tour. Yeah, things haven't been rosy no. for a long time in that environment. And you need, And you could say quite safely that, we have seen far from the best of Marcel Kittel in that team. Yeah. So he's obviously come in there as a, as a real marquee rider, I would assume on a big contract. He struggled at quick step as well, didn't he? Mm. And the expectation yeah. will, will have been really high for him in that environment. And he hasn't lived up to that expectation. And so he's been, he's been getting lots of pressure and publicly. Yeah. And we should say as well, because we are very much from the outside looking in and we don't know the details mm. of it, but it, it does sort of start to lead you down this path when you do start to talk about it and and questions of mental health do come into it when you're talking about the pressure riders face. Orla, are we in a time in cycling or a time in sports where athletes can feel open enough to talk about this sort of stuff just that little bit with that little bit more confidence just talk about it that little bit more openly? We definitely are and I think that's a really good thing and I hope that riders and athletes and people in general feel confident and open speaking about it but sometimes I think because it's spoken about a lot we can confuse pressure and stress with say clinical anxiety or clinical depression Mm. and they're very 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 different I mean I've suffered depression postnatal depression and and I can tell you it's it's a world away from feeling stress or feeling sad or feeling yeah just under pressure from your job so I think it's good but sometimes it doesn't help the debate or it doesn't help the social awareness of it because we can confuse the issues and I think unless he's come out and said I'm suffering depression then we shouldn't be putting that on him because yeah just for society in general I'm not sure which to to make absolutely clear we're we're not no 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 absolutely Yeah. yeah yeah But it is it is good that riders can be more open. I mean, we saw Pete Kenyuk as well saying um, that he needed time away from the sport. It was all a little bit too much for him. Uh, Mark Cavendish recently put on Instagram that he'd sort of taken a break from social media because he needed to go away and find himself a little bit. He needed time to himself, to his family. And and those things are good. And it also, I think, helps to humanise the riders a bit, which is, which is what we need because they're not machines. They're not robots. And for fans, for journalists, for sponsors, they all need to realise, I think, think if you're if you're trying to create and sustain a healthy sustainable responsible sport then you've got to give a little bit of support to the riders which is why in a way a mid-season termination of contract is a little bit bizarre really unless he does want to absolutely break away from the sport but in my mind if if there was that support from the team why not just keep him until he feels a bit better i don't know but yeah i don't i strange. don't think they've got time to do that i think as elite as the sport is getting as as hard as it's getting as competitive as it's getting as the season's getting longer every year i just there's there's no room for the week it's not it's not it's a sport for people to be okay just go and have a go and have a break so he yeah. is still an we asset, need every rider here because there's going to be riders injured broken bones this that and the other they don't have time to, to, you know, the welfare and things like that. To, to we could take someone else on. But we all have moments of weakness. So what? Where does that leave those moments of weakness? Just completely unsupported, or yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, but I think as when you're in that position as well, I think you're right. When you touched on, it is becoming more socially acceptable in every environment to voice mental health issues. I think that, and I think that's a great thing. When you're in his situation, you don't want to show weakness either, mm. and you prefer to say nothing. Especially as a sprinter. As a sprinter, as a team leader, because you know someone is like snapping at your heels to take that spot from you. 
and you know that that opportunity may not come back again. So the last thing you want to do is actually show weakness. So I think in that situation, the easiest thing is to say nothing. I said to someone at Team Sky once, in 2014, I won the Tour of California. And for the first time in two years since the Tour, I was getting back to a level where I thought I'd be competitive at the Tour again, even to do a job for Chris Froome, which is what I was building to do. I was climbing wells, time trialing wells, you know, and, and then I found out after that I wasn't doing the Tour that year. And I had an argument with the senior figure at Sky, and I said, do you know how, how hard and how much, I, how much I've worked to come back to this level after two years and all the fame and everything? And they said, yeah, but that's what you pay for. It was just, it was brutal. There was no sympathy. There was no, there was no I know, and that must have been really hard for you. It was just, well, that's what you paid for. You made a really good point as well in the breakaway where we were discussing how teams now have psychiatrists a lot as well as psychologists. And Brian Smith had made the point that, that they were there to help the riders. But as you said, and, and Simon, you backed this up when we were chatting in the green room earlier, they're not there to help the riders. They're not there to support their mental health. They're there to help them win. And that's it. And that, when you put it that way, course, absolutely. Yeah. It, it becomes a lot more cynical when you look at it that way, doesn't yeah. it? Go and see what problems he's got at home. Why is he not performing for us, you know? Yeah, I think you'll see, you see the, the, the teams are all about focusing on performance and the riders that do need some outside help, they're sourcing that from out, externally, w- yeah. externally, not from within the teams. Because again, I get think to the point, the teams aren't there, to prov- they're not there providing that and they don't want to seem to be as weak mm-hmm. in a team environment where that message is going to be relayed back to their sports directors and the guys writing the contracts and, 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 and building the teams. He has been in a place for for a long time though, where everyone has wanted a piece of him. Where he's been, there's, there's you know, he's, he's sort of come and taken Cavs crown as the the fastest man in the peloton, and everyone wants a piece of him. And he's he's sort of polite enough to do all of his post race interviews yeah. in English, in German. And that might be and, part of the and, exhaustion, you know, the, you know. He can't, but just just say that. Just say, look, I've been at the top for a long time. I need a break. But then there's also, I mean, that's an absolute privilege as well. You know, he seemed to enjoy that whenever, yeah. and every every person enjoys accolades when they come your way. And I guess that's the difficulty of finding the balance between all the praise and finding your level of who you really are. 